Welcome to the third in a series of Arizona Glass Classes sand carving familiarization videos. In the first of this series, we gave you an idea of what sand carving is. In the second video, we discussed what equipment is required and what optional equipment can be used in the sand carving process. In this video, we will attempt to show you how to use that equipment to create your own sand carved items. There are four basic steps required to create a sand carved item. They are create the artwork, create a sand carved mask from the artwork, apply the mask to the item to be sand carved, and then to sand carve the item. The first step in the process is creating the artwork to be sand carved. The design might be a company logo given to you by a customer, something you copied from the internet, or it could be your own creation, it doesn't matter. Normally artwork is created with a computer and software such as Adobe Creative Suites, Corel Graphics Suite, or Inkscape. With the exception of sand carving halftones, or photographs, all artwork should be created in black and white. Depending upon the method used to create your sand carving mask, cut vinyl or photo mask, your original can be vector or raster, but you will find that the effort required to convert raster art to vector is well worth the time for a number of reasons. Vector art can be used to create a photo mask or cut vinyl masking. Vector art is smaller in file size than raster. Vector art is easier to modify than raster. And vector art can be scaled to any size without loss of detail or clarity. There are two basic options for creating a sand carving mask. The first method is creating a photo mask. The second is with a cut mask utilizing a vinyl cutter and masking material. The masking material can either be 3 mil signed vinyl, all the way up to 25 to 35 mil rubber masking for heavy duty sand carving to produce deep cuts. Photo masks are created through a relatively simple photographic exposure process. With a photo resist mask, you are able to reproduce fine line detail with relative ease, including halftones. You can reproduce small text and fine line artwork. Photo masks can be created from raster or vector source graphics and are more commonly used for smaller items. Remove the cover of the ultraviolet exposure unit. A transparency or film positive is laid ink side up on the surface of the exposure unit. A film positive can be made by printing on vellum paper or transparency film with a laser printer or transparency film with an inkjet printer. Whichever method you use, the black areas must not only look black to the eye, but held up to the light they must be dense enough to keep the light from passing through the black areas at all. Depending upon the type of photo mask material being used, the transparency must either be a film positive or a film negative. A sheet of photo mask material is placed on the transparency. The photo mask material is placed so that the emulsion side is against the ink side of the transparency. Different brands and types of photo mask material are processed and handled slightly differently, so be sure to read and follow the detailed instructions provided with the material that you purchase. The transparency and photo mask material are smoothed around the cylinder and the cover is placed back on the unit again to hold everything in place. The exposure unit is then turned on and the mask material is exposed for the length of time specified for your type of photo mask and exposure unit. If you are using Rapid Mask HD, once the film is exposed, you can peel off the front protective sheet and apply the mask to the item to be blasted immediately. Any photo mask material other than Rapid Mask must be washed out before using. For washout style photo mask material, you will need to remove the front thin protective sheet after exposure. Attach the mask to the clipboard and develop the mask by washing it out under a high pressure spray of warm water. Once the mask is washed out, it must dry thoroughly, then you can attach it to the item to be blasted. The mask is aligned to the object, applied lightly, and then burnished and rubbed down from the center to the edges to work out all the air pockets and blisters. Once the mask has adhered well to the object to be blasted, the clear backing carrier sheet is removed. 
With washout style resist, if bubbles remain between the masking material and the glass, a small brass wire wheel can be purchased to lightly roll over the mask and puncture the mask allowing the bubbles to deflate and lay flat. The areas surrounding the mask are protected with masking tape, duct tape, or other materials to keep the excess abrasive from frosting the areas not meant for blasting. Although they can be cut by hand, normally cut vinyl masks are created with a vinyl cutter connected to your PC. A vinyl cutter is very similar to a plotter, but instead of a pen, it uses a blade to cut the material fed through it. Cut vinyl masks are better suited for larger artwork and artwork with less fine detail, such as text larger than a quarter of an inch. Cut vinyl masks are more durable than photo masks, depending upon the material used, and can be used to blast much longer times, resulting in much deeper carvings than available with photo resists. Cut vinyl masks are created from black and white vector artwork only. After the vinyl cutter has finished cutting the artwork, remove the vinyl from the cutter and trim the vinyl as required. Apply a layer of transfer tape to the surface of the vinyl and trim away the excess transfer tape around the vinyl. Align the vinyl artwork on the item to be blasted. Remove the backing sheet and apply the vinyl to the item. After burnishing down the vinyl, remove the transfer tape and weed the artwork by removing all the bits and pieces of vinyl from the areas that need to be blasted. A pair of fine tweezers, a dental pick, or an X-Acto knife are very helpful in this operation. After weeding, the areas surrounding the mask are protected with masking tape, duct tape, or other materials to keep the excess abrasive from frosting the areas not meant for blasting. After the mask has been applied to the item and the surrounding area is protected, the item is placed in the sandblasting cabinet. Connect the air supply to the pressure pot. Turn on the light and the dust collector for the cabinet and blast the item as desired. If you're doing a multi-stage sand carved item, some areas will be carved relatively deep and then you would remove the item from the cabinet, remove additional sections of the mask, and then lightly frost or sand carve the newly exposed areas, resulting in multiple deaths of sand carving. After blasting, shut off the pressure to the pressure pot, drain the pressure, and open up your cabinet. After shaking or brushing off any residual media from the object, remove the object from the cabinet. Remove the protective tape and masking material, being careful not to scratch the surface of the glass with any leftover abrasive in your fingers. Wash the item to remove the last remnants of the abrasive and enjoy your work. I hope this short video has given you a better idea of the process of creating a sand carved item. Lost? Need more directions? Check out our companion videos, Sand Carving 101, an introduction, and Sand Carving 102, Sand Carving Equipment, for information on how to put it all together and create your first sand carved item.